Hello my beautiful butterflies, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here my name is Beverly and it's lovely to see you today. In this video we're going to be having a little sit down and a chitty chat about medical trauma. So grab a cup of tea, let's get to it. people within the chronic illness community have experienced medical trauma in some way. A lot of us have experience of this and because of that I thought it was about time we sat down and had a chat about it. I see a lot of people posting on Instagram and Facebook about things they've been through, experiences they've had either with medical staff or just in a medical situation that has really stayed with them and really affected them and I think there's this big thing that we're scared of speaking up because we don't want to get it put in our records and affect how we're treated in the future we don't want to change the way people see us I don't know it's strange but I've never made an actual full-on complaint about anybody in the med in medical teams or in hospitals and things and I really wanted to start talking about this more get it out there stop that wall of silence that seems to be around this and become more aware of what, what is going on so let's have a little chat so before I wanted to talk about my personal experiences and experiences of people in the wide world wilderness out there <laughs> I wanted to have a quick look on my little iPad and see what the definition is and I found this really great article which I will leave a link to down below in the description so don't forget to check that out but it's by a woman who specializes as a trauma psychotherapist I don't know where it is so this is what she def defines it as medical trauma occurs as a direct consequence of an association with a medical setting be it at a hospital doctor's surgery or similar it can arise from the news of chronic life-changing illness a life death threatening diagnosis or routine operation that has impacted in a negative way leaving a fear of the medical setting so basically what it is is fear left over from an experience that you have in a medical setting or with medical professionals that leaves a fear behind and it does actually come under the umbrella of PTSD which is something that I hadn't really thought about I know I probably should have I probably should have realized that it would come under PTSD but I don't know I didn't really think of it as being a mental illness I just thought it was something like a fear that came from something that happened to me but the more I think about it the more it makes sense that it would come under that banner and it is a mental health issue and it's something that a lot of us who have chronic illnesses experience and live with and try and push through with I often think about people who have needle phobia because of bad experiences with needles and I have this a little bit it's not huge and I'm very thankful for that but I had this really awful experience with a nurse taking blood from me once and this was a long time ago they tried to take blood from me and they couldn't find the vein and what they'd actually done was gone through the vein and then they were wiggling it around under my skin oh just the thought of it makes my skin crawl and since then I have to warn people before they take blood from me before they do anything I have to warn them that I can potentially go lightheaded. I have not fainted because of having blood taken but I do sometimes get a bit ooh. Also I like to watch them do the procedure, I like to watch them do it so I can make sure they're not wiggling it about or doing anything weird like I have to make sure they're doing it right and that is very much in my head that it's going to happen again that was a one-off one person who's probably just qualified or had just seen somebody do it there is this thing in medical term if you didn't know i'm a qualified nurse i was qualified for like a year and a half before i became ill and had to leave that profession but when i was still nursing and when i was training we were told one see one do one show one so it would be you would watch somebody do a procedure then you would do it supervised and then you would teach somebody else the procedure and by that time you'd done it three times you were good to go and you could go and do <laughs> go and carry on and I think that kind of mentality is carried on not everybody is going to be good at everything in three tries at it not everybody is going to be able to just pick up a, a skill and go with it but it's this thing well 
you know I've shown it you you've done it yourself you've taught it to someone so carry on and I think sometimes we forget that medical professionals are just human beings doing their best and you know maybe the person who did that bad needle take was just doing their best you know maybe they were under pressure to do it and they didn't really want to do it I don't know what the story is that's how I kind of try and deal with that trauma of trying to think about how that nurse or doctor felt but there are some things that I've been through that even I can't explain away even I can't say oh this is okay having unqualified people do procedures is terrifying when I had a spinal tap I had three student doctors working together to do it and they did a terrible job and it's led to me having a complete phobia of anyone touching my lower back especially where my spine is it really freaks me out. I cannot touch my lower back myself. I can't have anybody else touch my lower back. It really freaks me out big time. And I'm not going to go into great big detail about any of the things that I've personally experienced. But if you would like me to, let me know down in the, down in the comments. And I will definitely do a video on each of these things. Because there's so much that goes into what becomes traumatic to you. That it's it's not enough. I, I this video would be too long basically but if you'd like me to do a video on each of these things I definitely will. It can come from how medical professionals treat us. For example a doctor who puts your symptoms down to just being in your mind or anxiety. How many of us have been to see a doctor about great deals of pain that we're in and we get told it's just anxiety. It happens all of the time and it's horrible. It's horrible to deal with and that can often mean that we don't want to go and see a doctor. We don't want to go and see our G about something because we're scared it's going to be minimized and that definitely is my thing I think that when that happened to me it's happened a couple of times when it happened with a GP that I was seeing she was really horrible no bedside manner no people skills whatsoever just not a nice person and I just couldn't connect with her at all and then the one time we started talking about fibromyalgia and she said this awful thing again if you want me to go into details let me know but ever since then I really struggle with wanting to make an appointment to see the doctor and that's really impacted my health because I'm sure there are symptoms and things that have come up since then that I should see the doctor about but I don't however that was the only time that I've ever actually said to the medical practice I don't want to see that doctor and it's in my notes and I don't care if that doctor knows about it to be honest that person has a very bad reputation in our town whenever I mention this doctor's name to anybody in the town they'll say oh yeah that doctor yeah I don't blame you they have a really really bad reputation I'm sure they have a lot of people who don't want to see them and you would think that the doctor's practice would just get rid of them but I suppose they're so desperate for doctors that they're just kind of dealing with it it's a shame but yeah it can come from that a lot and I hear a lot about that on Instagram and Facebook and places like that just people talking about how having somebody react to your illness or to your symptoms really making it hard for you to want to see a medical professional and that's so dangerous you know GPs are your first line of defense against long-term illness or they're, they're your first port call when you need medications or you need help and they shouldn't be people that you're scared to go and see they just shouldn't lastly it can come from the healing of an operation or your experience around an operation I thankfully have only ever had one operation and it was a day case I was only in there for like the day and then I went home and I healed at home and I was very lucky nothing happened and I healed very well and I'm very thankful for that but my mom has very different experiences whenever we you know I sat down today and said I'm going to talk about medical trauma have you ever had any mom my mom has multiple sclerosis but she's also been in a very horrific car accident in the past in another country and she was treated really badly there and then when she came back here they found that she had hydrocephalus and she had to have a, a hole put into her skull and a stent put into her brain to drain off the fluid and the healing of that has really affected her it's really affected how you know if I say you're so ill you need to go to A&E she'll be like I'm not going there I'm not going to hospital she's really against going in to be checked up she doesn't like it she'd rather just deal with whatever she's dealing with 
she's quite fine with district nurses and things coming to the house but she's not a fan of going to the hospital and that is directly because of those two circumstances that she had to go through. I think it's so so difficult to say oh I have traumatic memories or I have a phobia because of going to see a doctor or going to see a nurse or having this procedure done because we're supposed to trust our medical professionals we're supposed to go to the doctors and feel safe and feel trusted to know how our body feels and it, that something isn't right but unfortunately that is often how not how it goes it's not how we feel and that is very very sad I really really just wanted to make this video to say to you that you are not alone. You're not alone in this. If you are experiencing any kind of medical trauma and you want to share your story or you want to comment on something to do with this video definitely leave a comment down below. But you're not alone in this and there are specialists and therapists who deal specifically with this and I'm sure if you feel up to it you can get help with that on a professional level. But if it's just something that you want to talk about or you want to get your experience off your chest definitely leave a comment down below i love talking to you guys it always makes me feel less alone when it comes to things like this when people are like oh me too and this is what happened to me or that's what happened to me and we can talk and help one another through this whole big thing so if you are interested in doing so and you would like to help others the comment section is a safe place for you just make sure if it's something like you're talking about something horrific or there's a lot of blood or description of illnesses or anything that could trigger someone just put a little trigger warning at the start of your comment so people are aware of it that is all I ask but yeah it's a safe place and you are more than invited to get into the conversation here. Also let me know of course if you would like to hear in more detail little story times about my own personal traumas because I do I do believe in being open and honest and I do think if we speak our truth it helps us. It can help us to grow, it can help us to develop, it can help us as people and it helps each other. So if you would like me to do that just let me know in the comments. While you're down there, don't forget to leave this video a cheeky little like if you enjoyed it or if you are interested in this topic and would like to see more. It helps me to know what videos you enjoy and what videos you want to see more of. So definitely let me know down below. And if you're not yet subscribed, I would love to see you join the family I'm here. This is the Butterfly family and we would love to have you as part of it. This is such a sweet little community. I have some wonderful people who often comment on my videos and I'm so thankful for all of you. We are getting our way to a thousand subscribers. I am so thankful. Never thought it would happen but I'm just so grateful. So if you want to join the family make sure you head down there, hit that little subscribe button, ring that little bell so you always know when I upload. I'm usually here Mondays and Fridays, my health permitting. I always do my very best to be here with you every week, twice a week. I really hope that you enjoyed this video, that you got something out of it, that it helped you to feel a little less alone. That's all we can ask for in this world and that is why I, I make videos here on YouTube. I hope that you will sit down, grab a cup of tea, put your feet up and check out this playlist that I put up together for you. I would, I would just really enjoy that. I, I always enjoy spending time with you. I hope you're staying safe and staying indoors at the moment. Please take care everyone and I'll see you next time. Bye.